Hi, my name is Brenda Merriweather, and I'm going to attempt to show you how to do my uh, outlining with Sharpies in a little video to demonstrate. These are the tools that you'll be using. There's my color chart so I can know what I'm doing. I have carbon paper and, uh, uh, and scotch tape. I use uh, Duncan Concept Glazes. I use Sharpie markers, the ultra fine and the fine. I take my concept glazes or under glazes and I put them into tubes, squeeze tubes so that I can use with the, uh, with the design. This is the design I'm going to be attempting to do today. I'll transfer this with the carbon paper to this blank tile and ultimately hope to have something that looks somewhat like that. I do a lot of this with the concept so I store and keep a lot of my colors in, in uh, squeeze tubes and this is an example of that. First I take the tile and I wrap it in the car a sheet of carbon paper and I tape it in place. Carbon plate paper needs to touch every corner of that tile depending on what your design is like. So here's your tile with the that. Now what I'll do is I'll take this sheet and I'll wrap it around here and tape it in place. I really don't want that pattern to move so I tape it pretty securely in place. So here we have my design ready to trace. So what I'll do now is I'll go over each one of these lines with a pen and trace that design to the tile. So in order to trace this you need to press pretty firmly to make sure that the pattern goes all the way through. I'll go over each one of these lines and then I'll go over those lines with Sharpies when I'm done. I have finished tracing the design onto the tile. Sometimes the design needs a little help to fit the tile or needs a little correction. Uh, once you do the line, you do not draw over that line while you're tracing because it's going to make your work look really sloppy. So single lines and just try to keep to the pattern. If you make some changes and corrections at this point, nobody's going to know but you. So here you have the complete design transferred onto the tile. You look at the tile and you find that there's maybe a couple points that need a little bit of help. You could go in at this point and fix it, touch it up with a pen or, or something really small. Pencil works too, but pencil, pencil smudge. So this is your graphite image onto the tile that I will now take a Sharpie to. So here I have my Sharpie ready. I have a lot of Sharpies ready because sometimes um, the bisque tile dries the heck out of these Sharpie Sharpies. So I'll go over each one of these lines with a Sharpie. I go over um, most of the lines with the ultra fine but on the outside edges, when I want to make sure that the glaze stays a little further away, um, I'll sometimes have a thicker outline like right here. And then what I'll do is I'll use something like this so that the line is much thicker. And then I can outline the whole thing with a thick line. But the lines in the middle need to be much smaller. So you go over each one of these lines until you get the whole thing outlined with the Sharpies. So now here it is completely outlined and I can tell you, well I'm still going to do more dark outline around the bird 
but uh, um, I can tell you that if you did not cover an area or you've corrected an area like for example these areas here where you could see the graphite lines are still there those must be dealt with you need to remove those graphite lines because as small as they are they do act as a resist of its own it acts like a pencil and so uh, you need to try to um, either scrape out or uh, uh, or mark marker over the lines so try your best to make sure that all the lines are covered okay so here it is with the lines corrected and the section down here uh, filled in that was left blank and my lines are corrected I have uh, uh, outlined the bird with a stronger outline and this is ready to place. Okay, I can tell you that I'm getting my squeeze bottles ready here. <coughs> Sorry, eating watermelon. And some of these um, clog. So the best thing you can do is to take a needle and, and that usually does it. You also might want to wipe off the needle in between so you don't share the glaze color. What I've got is I've got the colors in order of darkness to lightness. Whoop. I drew blood, first blood. I've also got um, the backs of these concept bottles marked by their glaze number. This says 352. This one says 52. This one says 506. So now I've cleared all my tubes. You need to make sure that each one of them, you shake them and you make sure they're ready to start flowing before you start trying to put them on the tile. Sometimes it's a little thick and you may have to add a touch of water to your container. So now I'm just going to look at this guy and go, where did I put the dark colors? And I put all the dark colors on the bottom, the dark red, you can see what I've done is I've graduated the tile, the colors on these sections under the um, moon. All right, so that's the red. There's only one on the area that takes the red. If you come to an area that it's really hard to um, get it in there because it's either too thick, well, you, you take a little bit and you put it off to the side, and then you could take a pin. or a needle or whatever and draw it into your corner draw it into your point you're not going to be able to get things into a point quite as pretty as you'd like with a squeeze bottle so you need to um, help it a little bit also um, if it's too thick it simply won't flow into the smaller areas so you need to make sure that uh, it's not too thick but if it's too thin, it will blow out all over the place. So this is my next color graduation, which is going to be the moon, or the sun, or whatever this is. This is 506, which is neon coral. 
and you see it goes on pretty thick and I just use a squeeze bottle right sort of close to the line and that's usually good enough Oops. You don't want your squeeze bottle to squirt like that because what it will do it will splatter your glaze all over the place. Okay, so I need it there. And I need this color on the next line of this. Kind of sloppy. You need to, at the end of the work here, what you do is you go back over your lines to make sure they stay clear and open. Because if you glaze over that line, that's not going to be real good. What's going to happen is, is that it leaves some kind of distortion to it and it could blend your other colors. So there. That's all of that one. Now, I'll keep migrating up. Next color is um, 52, which I believe is bright tangerine. Another thing too is when um, you have these little oopses and it goes over the line a little bit, you should try to wait until it's a little drier because then it's easier to scrape off. So unless it's interfering with what you're doing next, just leave it there to dry and then go back and clean your line. I was a little concerned it was going to blow out there, so I wanted to make sure that I didn't have a blast on, the, on my first contact here. So. There's your tangerine line going down. Now the sweet thing about these is they kind of flat a little bit when they're glazing, when they're fired. So even if your lines look a little off, sometimes they self-correct when they're firing. I really like using concepts because they, they stay where they're put and they're easy to blend and I don't have to put clear glaze over it. There's that color. Now I'm going to keep going up the line to like get to the yellows. In the other areas here, I'm just going to take, well, it looks like I don't have my black out here. Uh, but here's your dark, here's your bright gray. You can see your bright gray is in, the, in those little guys there. And this is too thin, so I'm going to have to do a lot of cleanup on these lines. This blew out all over the place. It's okay though. It's all fixable. Okay, so you can see I'm going to continue that. And I'm just going to keep filling this out, and I'll get back to you when I'm done. You can see how this is turning out. And you can also see that in areas where it overlaps, you've got to scrape it out, you've got to show those black lines again. Here, I'll have to draw that line through there again. Once again, making sure it's dry before you do that because otherwise it just smears. There we go. Like right here, I can't glaze this outside color until I've got this one contained. So I will remove the excess here.
get the glazing. But also, uh, once I'm done with this, what I'll do is I'll go back over these lines to open them back up again because you make mistakes and, and sometimes the glaze isn't cooperative. Let me finish this. So now you can see that um, all my lines have been cleaned off and uh, this is ready to glaze the outside and once that's done this will be ready to fire. Real close look so you can see Now, one of the points I'd like to make here that if you're not using squeeze bottles, you have to apply enough coats to make this happen. When I use a squeeze bottle, I only have to apply one coat. So the squeeze bottle is pretty handy. If you can't do it, like I said, you could pull it into the corners with needles and small paint brushes. In a real tiny area, squeeze bottles just don't work. You've got to use small brushes. In those areas, you've got to make sure you've got good coverage. So the squeeze bottle equates to about three coats. The brush and the needles would uh, uh, require uh, several different um, layers. Mahalo. And I'll, po I'll post a picture here as soon as I get this done with the background. Okay, there it is, ladies and gentlemen. That is done. And when it dries, it'll be ready to fire. When it fires, I'll post another little video of how I do the staining and finishing and framing it. This is how you do sharpie outlines with underglazes or glazes. Remember, you gotta carve it back off the lines. And there you have it.